Good evening. Welcome. Blessed to have you here for our Ash Wednesday service, those of you online as well. Christ Jesus was sent into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. I ask you to now join me in our call to worship from, uh, from scripture. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Help us, O Lord, to join Jesus on a path to the cross over these 40 days. Jesus told his disciples, the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. We praise you, Lord, for the wondrous love of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Holy God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of tenderness and strengthen us to face our mortality that we may reach with confidence for your mercy in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Please rise for our opening hymn. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Let us listen for what God has to say to us this day. John answered Jesus, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, Do not stop him. For whoever is not against you is for you. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, 
They said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So on Ash Wednesday, we begin a journey with Jesus to Jerusalem and to the cross. And, and that journey was a painful journey for Jesus. And it's a painful journey for us as well. And I think this is indicative of just the pain of life. Our life is, is a journey um, in and through the cross of Christ Jesus, in and through pain and grief and sorrow and sadness, into the resurrection of Jesus, into eternal life and joy and peace. Uh, Luke, in our gospel lesson, has a kind of turning point. It's following the transfiguration with Jesus and a couple, three disciples up on the mountaintop that I preached about on Sunday, um, Jesus being glorified. And then they come down and Jesus sets his face towards Jerusalem. So Jesus has shown his disciples who he is and now he's going to the cross. And Luke is clear, he set his face towards Jerusalem. And he has two narratives that we just read on either side of that turning point that are related um, to the painful journey that Jesus has ahead. In the first, um, because he's, he's, going, he, he's going to the cross, he's going to judgment, he's going to, to condemnation on our behalf. And in the story that precedes this, this turning point, in Luke's gospel, um, there's, there's judgment and there's condemnation. There's a man who is not a follower of Jesus uh, who is exercising demons. He's curing people of demons even though he's not a follower of Jesus. And the disciples tried to stop him because he's not a follower of Jesus. They're judging him. He's not one of us. We need to stop him from curing people in Jesus' name. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. Whoever is not against you is for you. Don't stop him. And this is such amazing news. Because we all know people who, like this man, are doing amazing work but who are not conscious followers of Jesus. And, and Jesus is letting us know, you don't, you don't have to worry about those people and whether or not they're following me. If you have an opportunity to share good news about who I am and let them know what is the source of all their good work and what is the end of all their good work, wonderful. But certainly don't try to, to stop or oppose them in any way. If they're not against you, they are for you. Um, as th these people, to me, are an amazing blessing. Uh, I work with them on a regular basis in the ministerium here in Scotch Plains in Panwood. Um, we receive their blessings whenever we go to doctors and therapists, um, whenever our children have good teachers who are not conscious followers of Jesus. We need to remember that if these people are not opposing us and they are carrying out good work, that they are people with whom we can, can and should cooperate. We should be in dialogue with them. 
There is so much opposition in our world today. And frankly, I'm tired of it. Another, another aspect of this that I thought about is um, those, those followers of Jesus, those, those Christians who are doing things in Jesus' name and like to proclaim Jesus' name, but who are not particularly good followers of Jesus. So there's, there's both, there's those kind of people who seem to be doing the, the peacemaking and the justice making and the loving others that Jesus called them to, but they're not conscious Christians. And then, and then there are those who are um, loving the name of Jesus, but who are not doing the best job of following him. And this story reminds us that they're with us as well. And we just need to help them mature. We don't have to be scolding them about their wrong beliefs or their wrong practices or whatever it might be. If people are not against us, if they're not resisting us, if they're not opposing our journey with Jesus, these folks are with us. And we need to help them to know that they are with us, part of the one family of God, and invite them into Christ Jesus and life in him, conscious life in him. I, I'm just really tired of all the opposition and all of the division in our world today. We see Christians battling Christians. We see Christians battling people from other faiths. We see people opposing one another left and right. And God is calling you and me to something different. And that is dialogue cooperation, mutual respect, mutual understanding. The next story goes even further. Jesus and the disciples are on their way to Jerusalem and they have to go through Samaria. And when night falls, they're tired and they're hungry and the Samaritans won't welcome them into their homes, won't give them food, won't give them a place to rest. And the disciples are tired and they're angry. And they say to Jesus, shall we call down fire upon that village? And Jesus says, no, and he rebukes them. The, the reason the Samaritans wouldn't receive them um, is because the passage says, Jesus was facing and set for Jerusalem. The Samaritans are sort of like um, heretical cousins of the Jews. Uh, they um, had their own temple up north, and so instead of making sacrifices down in Jerusalem, they would make sacrifices at their own temple, and they didn't believe in the history books of the Hebrew scriptures, and they didn't believe in the prophets either. They only believed in the first five books of the Bible, the law. And so here come these Jews who are on their way to Jerusalem and uh, ask for help. And whoever was there, they just weren't having it. They probably had been <laughs> rebuked by Jews for their heresies, for not believing in the prophets, for not believing in the history books, for not going to Jerusalem to sacrifice like they ought to have sacrificed. And so they're gonna get a little revenge. No, I don't think so. Go to the next village. Maybe they'll help you out. And the disciples, in their weariness, are wanting to curse them in return. And Jesus says, no. God, no. Um, the, the Samaritans were not opposing Jesus, but they were refusing to help him. And still Jesus refused to condemn them. This is the way of Jesus. This is the way that we have to follow. And boy, is it a hard way. Even that first bit that I talked about of accepting differences and working to cooperate people from other faith traditions or people um, from other political places than we are, even that is difficult work, right? The next bit is even harder. When people actually don't want to help us, even though we need help. 
Jesus says, you have to return their lack of help with help if it's necessary. You have to, instead of re responding in kind, you have to respond as I respond to broken people all around me. And what a blessing this is. Because, friends, we are, we are all like this sometimes. We all refuse to help sometimes, right? We're, we're finite. We're limited. We're weary. And yet, Jesus says, I'm here for you regardless. Please do your best to bear with others who aren't helping you. Please do your best to love others even though they are not loving you. Um, I needed a reminder of this today. It's Ash Wednesday. I didn't work on this sermon at all yesterday. Finally getting at it late morning and the call came in. I'm an administrator of a, a couple of funds, one of them the ministerium fund that I mentioned earlier. And when you're an administrator of funds and the call for help comes in, I was like, oh Lord, still got a sermon to do. Um, where are the ashes? Are they up in the sacristy where they're supposed to be? And then I remember this passage about the, the, the weary disciples sent on their way. And, and the family who called um, was about to get kicked out of the hotel they were in. They were evicted from their apartment back a few weeks ago. And uh, they run out of money for the hotel. And so I knew what I needed to do. But it was hard, right? Helping people is hard. Um, the extra phone calls, extra emails, how much should I help them, getting approval from the other leaders, sharing information so that the payment can, it was, it, but I had to remember, David, this is not a burden. This is a blessing. This is from God. And you need to receive this as a blessing from me. And it was. So this Lent, let's, let's stop judging those who are in different political and religious camps. And let's look for ways to cooperate, number one. Number two, prepare yourself for a fair amount of resistance and rejection. and pain as you journey to Jerusalem with Jesus. The more fidelitous we are to Jesus, the more we participate in the sufferings of Jesus, and the more the fallen world is going to resist us. So just, just prepare yourself for that. And do your best to just endure it and bless in return. And remember how it feels when that happens to you when that resistance, when that rejection, when that judgment comes your way, remember how that feels and do your best not to do it to others because we all encounter people who bother us, who annoy us, who have different positions, who are saying things that we don't like, who believe things that we don't like, and maybe we ought to just simply listen and have conversation rather than jumping to judgment. And then lastly, remember to help. Do your best to help whenever asked. God is there, trusting that God is going to provide the resources necessary, the strength necessary, the time necessary, the finances necessary um, to provide the help that is needed and make sure that you and yours are okay as well. So to the God who is with us every painful step of the way, to the cross and to the resurrection and eternal life.
to God belongs all the glory and the power and the honor now and forevermore. Amen. Friends in Christ, every year at the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and renew our life in this mystery. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We begin our journey to Easter with the sign of ashes. This ancient sign speaks of the frailty, the uncertainty of human life, and marks the repentance of this community. I invite you, sisters and brothers, in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer and fasting, and as Pastor David said, by works of love, and by reading and meditating on the word of God. Let us bow our heads in silence before God and confess our sin in silence. your 
Sisters and brothers, hear the good news. Our sins have been nailed to the cross and they will not come out. The nails do not come out. We are forgiven, clean. Rejoice in that. Amen. And since we have been forgiven by Christ, let us forgive one another in the world and, and share the peace of Christ Jesus and greet one another while I prepare the table. Hear the words of our Lord and is this on? Yep. Hear the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. No one who comes to me will I cast out. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Our Lord and Savior invites all who trust in the mercy of his Father to share the feast that he has prepared. Please join me in the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. You are our God, and we are the creatures of your hand. You made us from the dust of the earth, breathed into us the breath of life, and set us in your world to love and serve you. When we rejected your love and ignored your wisdom, you did not reject us. You loved us still and called us to turn again to you in obedience and love. Out of your great love for the world, you sent Jesus among us to set us free from the tyranny of evil. 
he lived as one of us, sharing our joys and sorrows. By his dying and rising, he releases us from the bondage of sin and frees us from the dominion of death. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread that we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ Jesus. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. And we now pray for the world that needs your help. Uh, we pray for people who are sick, hungry, those who are struggling financially, those who are feeling lost, alone, neglected. You, O oh God, are a God of compassion. The cross says you are with them in all their pain and suffering and that you desire for them to rise up out of whatever is plaguing them. We thank you, Father, that you are a great physician. And we lift up now particular people who are on our hearts and minds. We also take time, Lord, um, to remember those who have gone before us on this Ash Wednesday. Uh, we remember those who have loved us, cared for us, those who have um, nurtured us in the ways of your Son. And we take time now to give thanks for them uh, and to lift up others uh, who need your help. And we do so in a time of silence. We thank you for hearing our prayers, and we ask that you would lead us to live as the Lord requires, doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with you, our God. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ until this mortal life is ended and all that is earthly returns to dust. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forevermore. And we are bold to pray as Christ Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of Jesus' death, he was at table with his disciples eating the Passover meal. And after giving thanks to God, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord.
And if you would like to come forward for the imposition of ashes, you are welcome to do so. You can receive them on your hand or on your forehead, whatever is your preference. Let us rise and again remember to whom we belong in life and in death.
acts of service are for offering when we are giving or when receiving we belong to God we belong to God mid times of sorrow and in times of pain when sensing beauty or our love's embrace whether we suffer or sing rejoicing we belong to God we belong to God across this wide world we shall always find those who are crying with no peace of mind but when we help them or when we feed them we belong to God we belong Sisters and brothers, let us go forth as people of joy, that we repent, but we rejoice in Christ's mercy. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen.